Once upon a time, that's, I suppose, how every fairy tale begins. Just across the Adriatic, long in the night, at a kitchen table that even in the most happier time looked as if it was cleaved down the middle, two people were breaking up. So that's the end of the fairy tale. I was the person at one side of that table, and Dražen Grubišić, my most significant breakup, or my TEDx, as I might start to call him from today, was at the other side. So we were kind of feeling bad, and I would like him to be here with me and to be nervous to present all this to you with me, but probably he would just say, you do all the talking and I stand behind you. You remember how the Pet Shop Boys did the interviews back in the 80s? Well, we are that old, and 15 years ago, we decided to go separate ways. And we were menaced by emotional breakdown, amnesia. We didn't want to lose all the beautiful moments we lived together. So what's the big deal, you might ask me? Why are you so special? Where we are not? <laughs> Had I started this talk with a simple question to all of you, have you ever had your heart broken? I would probably have the whole Teatro Olimpico say yes. So what are the options? You can read self-help literature, you can talk to your friends for hours, you can see a therapist or subscribe to ever-popular dating applications as Tinder, where you can swipe towards your new partner. Well, I'm not a swiping person, I'm more for poetry. And this is why I would like to share this poem of Mary Oliver with you. To live in this world, you must be able to do three things. To love what is mortal, to hold it against your bones, knowing that your life depends on it, and when the time comes to let it go, to let it go. But we didn't have that ritual to let things go, and all your friends tell you just get over it, move on, go to the movies, but even seeing a film is cheaper if you take a love seat. But in all that debris surrounding us, there was one banal object, a little wind-up toy we used to call Honey Bunny, that in a way glued the pieces of memory together and welded the past relation with present regrets. So this little toy became the first building block in a solution we came up with, a solution that still ties us together and might easily be the most beautiful thing we have created together. And it's a collection of objects of no apparent value, keepsakes, mementos, trinkets, of no value, monetary or artistic, and they all witness an end of relationship. So we decided to create a public space for every union that ever was. And we decided to call it Museum of Broken Relationships like coined phrase that makes people laugh or perplexes them and makes me blush in front of museum professionals. But American media scholar Neil Postman had declared that every single museum tries to formulate an answer to a fundamental question. What does it mean to be a human being? And after nine years, 30 international exhibitions around the world, and even the permanent museum we created in Zagreb, Croatia. I have been privileged to see at least 2,000 answers to that question. That number corresponds to number of objects and stories we have in our collection now. They are rock solid at garden, as garden gnomes, they are delicate as wisp of hair we got in Paris, or they are just outdated as this router we got in San Francisco. And they are all submitted anonymously with the story of their owners as the only text. When we started to receive the objects, we realized that we are confronted with 
immense richness and variety. That some of them, like these frogs, didn't even speak about, didn't even refer to romantic relationship. Some other revealed something more important and more precious about the country, the context these stories and objects were coming from, like this little piglet that came in from Jerusalem and is a sincere confession of a Jewish girl who gave up on her student love in Denmark for the sake of her family tradition. And now she commemorates her love for him and his love for bacon in our museum. <laughs> this letter was written by a schoolboy on a convoy leaving besieged town of Sarajevo. This letter he, he was planning to send to his childhood crush, Lil Girl Elma, has probably said more about the atrocities in the war-torn Yugoslavia to visitors in Singapore or London than many history reports or often biased media reports. I don't even know how many objects and stories I could present to you. And at the time where the world's biggest encyclopedia is created by every man, museums are coming out of their museum walls, and they are using personal objects to connect visitors in meaningful ways that cross the divides of class, culture, language, or religion that seem to define our world. I could have never, ever imagined that I would be placing objects as Muslim prayer mat or a stiletto shoe from an ex-prostitute in the oldest church in Amsterdam. And not only did that happen, but these objects were included in the church service during the four Sundays before Christmas. On the other hand, I was so surprised that the banal sex toy as a black dildo from Bloomington in Indiana could create such a stir in the visitor centers of the European Parliament, another place where we presented our collection. First, it was threatened to be completely removed, and then someone very intelligent suggested uh, for it to be put on a pedestal twice as high as all the others, so the inquisitive eyes of small children would not be too curious. And I was so proud to be European when the Vice President of the Parliament himself overruled both suggestions. And this Exhibit 37, as they referred to it, stayed as a coy and silent witness of the importance of good sex in marriage. This little box is the world's most traveled game of Uno, as called by its owner. And I crossed paths with him when I was coming out of the museum, and he was coming in. And then I witnessed him taking this game out of his pocket, and only later when I read the story, I beca became aware it was token for his private and global wars, a token of impossible love while he was American soldier in Afghanistan. I could tell you a story of thousands of paper cranes, and we invested work of 10 people for hours, for days. We were entangled in fish lines trying to hang these cranes in order to visually render a teenage love that was not requited. When the person who came to see the exhibition, of course, behind the, those cranes saw them hanging, she was so touched that we could see tears in her eyes. And one of the helpers said, all this work to make one person cry. Yes, it was worth it. That one person in Mexico City, or I could go back to Amsterdam, where I was uh, in an apartment of a brilliant man I never knew before, who was suffering of an incurable illness. 
I was there to be entrusted with this painting, representing him in the middle with two other men with whom he was in a very comp complicated and intricate threesome relationship for years. I will never forget the weight of the painting and the beauty of the scene as we were carrying it down the Amsterdam canals. When I learned of his passing, barely a week after the opening night of our exhibition, I realized that the last sentence of his story would probably resonate for me forever. And it goes, don't let death stop you from traveling. These objects stay with you a long time. Stories, voices, sometimes even faces. And I sometimes feel there is even music to that. But with what kind of music you are going to leave this space, which is a tes testimony that in loss and pain we are all equal, it's entirely up to you. You cover the space between the object and yourself, first as an impartial visitor and then as a fellow human being. And the empathy is the feeling I would like you to live with. Some people say it's a really depressing place, and I always tell them, no, it's a museum dedicated to love, just upside down. And I have seen this face filling with dignity, empathy, solace, hope, even laughter. And there is light even in the darkest of stories, and maybe one of them I want to share with you now. And I urge you to remember that if anything is universal in these stories and these people is their wish to step out of isolation, the desire to share, and longing to fall in love again. Like this little flashlight. Oh, sorry. We got from Berlin. So the last line of this really moving story that testifies of a loss of a loved person to suicide, she took her life alone in a hotel room. And the surviving partner concludes the story with the lines that can be interpreted just as simple instructions to curator. But for me, and I really believe for you today, they take on a deeper meaning. And they go like this. Hang it blinking, because it reminds me of a heartbeat. And the battery can be exchanged. Thank you very much. Grazie.